Uh, how many cardiologists in the audience? Show of hands. Come on, stick them up. Okay, and how many surgeons? Okay, good. All right. Um, so I'm going to give you an overview today of uh, coronary artery bypass grafting for stable coronary artery disease. Uh, we'll look at the history of coronary bypass surgery, the indications and evidence for it in stable coronary artery disease, outcomes and uh, morbidity, evolving techniques in cabbage, and spend a little bit of time talking about the, uh, the issues that surround the use of cabbage versus PCI for patients in uh, in, uh, in stable CAD <clears throat> and talk a little bit about future trends. Uh, I would encourage you to go to the 2014 uh, European Society of Cardiology and EACS guidelines. They are the most up-to-date. The latest guidelines uh, for stable uh, coronary artery disease, myocardial revascularization issued by the AHA and the ACC are from 2011. And this is a very useful way for you to look and review uh, the literature um, on the subject with a very thoughtful analysis of, uh, of the data that's out there. Um, now, cabbage turned 50 last year. It was first performed in 1960, uh, 1964 successfully uh, here in Houston and, and in fact in Russia by, uh, by Professor Kolosov who used a lemur to the LED. This is a, um, get the cursor to work, yeah. This is a, um, um, a reproduction of the original angiogram of the patient that Dr. DeBakey and uh, actually Dr. Garrett was the, was the uh, primary surgeon. And it's very hard to appreciate because the quality is poor, but this patient had a left main stenosis. And this is a post-operative angiogram showing uh, contrast in the patent vein graft to the LAD. A nice little historical um, uh, picture here. Um, cabbage has uh, evolved uh, since the early 1950s uh, when cardiopulmonary bypass uh, was first uh, invented by, uh, by, by Gibbon, um, uh, which, which enabled really open heart surgery to be performed. And geography by Mason Soans in 1962 made it possible to define the anatomy. Cardioplegia in the early 1970s by Mark Brain, Bridgettes, and Thomases in England, and Brett Schneider in Germany really transformed the ability to operate on the heart because you could stop the heart and and, and do much more complex stuff. And in the 1990s, off-pump coronary bypass surgery um, uh, 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 took off and minimally invasive techniques for, uh, for uh, cabbage in selected patients uh, really has, uh, has uh, evolved from the 2000s onwards. Um, so the evidence for cabbage really goes back to the 70s and the 80s, and it's based in three large trials um, uh, that compared cabbage to medical therapy. Uh, they're all important trials for you to look up and know. Um, less, it's, it's also important to know that less than 10% of the patients received a lemograft, and medical therapy then, of course, was not what it was today. That was before the era of statins, and there was a lot of inconsistency in the way these patients were treated medically. Um, the three trials uh, really uh, are the VA study, uh, which uh, looked at patients with, uh, which showed that patients with triple vessel disease and poor left ventricular function did better with cabbage. That was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 1984. The European coronary surgery study, uh, which showed that patients with left main, triple vessel disease, double vessel disease with a proximal LED lesion did well. That was in the Lancet in 1980 and, uh, and uh, with an update in the New England Journal in 1988. And the coronary artery surgery study, uh, which showed that patients with triple vessel disease and impaired left ventricular function did better with cabbage as opposed to medical therapy. And that was in circulation in 1983. Um, in 1994, there was a good meta-analysis uh, that was published in The Lancet, which basically updated the data from seven randomized controlled trials comparing cabbage with medical therapy, looking at um, um, more than 2,500 patients followed over 10 years and showed that compared to medical therapy again, cabbage improved survival and symptoms and the benefits were seen most in patients with triple vessel disease, left main stenosis, poor left ventricular function, and, uh, and uh, patients with severe symptoms. Um, now, it's important also to note that the benefits of cabbage were underestimated for severe disease because most of these patients who were enrolled in these early trials were relatively low risk. The results were, uh, were, were, uh, were analyzed on an intention to treat basis, but more than 40% of the medical patients in, in these trials crossed over to cabbage and only 10% received an IMA. 
importantly also, even in these early trials, even in the pre-statin area, uh, 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 these, these trials demonstrated that cabbage uh, did not have a survival benefit uh, for patients in single or double vessel disease and normal LV function. Remember, another caveat here is that only uh, less than 10% received an eye uh, internal mammary artery graft. And, uh, and uh, yes, let's see, next slide. So uh, this is a nice little thing uh, from the European Society guidelines uh, that was published uh, last year, uh, which basically shows a timeline of the trials that really have taken place since 1964 when the first, uh, first cabbage was done. And it's a, it's a nice little snapshot uh, to have because it's a good way for you to be able to look up individual trials. Everything above the, tr above the line over here, um, sorry, everything below the line in yellow compares revascularization, whether it's cabbage or PCI versus medical therapy. And then above the line, you've got trials that look at balloon angioplasty versus cabbage, bare metal stenting versus cabbage, drug-eluting stenting versus cabbage, and back early on over here, plain old balloon angioplasty. Of course, the major morbidity of cabbage, uh, which is why um, uh, 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 we continue to look for less invasive ways of doing it, and one of the reasons why PCI really, um, uh, one of the driving forces behind the advancement of PCI um, is, is the fact that cabbage does even today carry uh, significant complications potentially with it. Greatly reduced today, I'm happy to say, but, uh, but certainly still very much uh, present. Stroke, myocardial infarction, lung problems, kidney problems, and you can now calculate the predicted risk of mortality and complications in an individual patient by going uh, to the SDS database. And all you have to do really is type into your Google search bar SDS risk calculator, and the first hit that comes up will be the URL that you need to access for this. It takes you all of three minutes, maybe four minutes, to type in all the data that you need to, and in the top right-hand corner, it'll pop up a risk, predicted risk of mortality for an individual patient, um, and also the risk of complications such as kidney failure, prolonged ventilation, et cetera. Useful thing when you're discussing um, the option of surgery with your patients. Cabbage, of course, just like stents, has evolved uh, with um, uh, uh, the use of not just one, but bilateral internal mammary arteries increasingly, um, uh, radial arteries, and on-pump cabbage, off-pump cabbage, minimally invasive techniques, and more recently, a hybrid philosophy. We don't know where that fits into the treatment paradigm for these patients, but it's something which is being looked at. Minim minimally invasive cabbage, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is really ap applicable to a relatively small subset of patients. We're not here to talk about it, but essentially uh, you would make a left, uh, 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 left mini thoracotomy approach and use tools that are inserted percutaneously to access your targets and do the bypasses. And uh, this is what it looks like uh, about a month later. Now, when it comes to PCI and coronary artery disease, PCI claimed equivalence to cabbage and uh, therefore claims parallel benefit over medical therapy. Well, what's the evidence for that? Um, the COURAGE trial in 2007 in the New England Journal of Medicine uh, looked at uh, uh, close to 2,500 patients that were randomized between PCI and optimal medical therapy in the modern era, which includes, of course, statins, beta blockers, et cetera, and, and, uh, and patients who received optical, optimal medical therapy only and showed no difference in death or MI with up to seven years of follow-up. And PCI was better at relieving angina, which is extremely important to note because angina can and is a very disabling symptom. Um, but it was not more effective at preventing myocardial infarction or death. Okay, there we go. Now the syntax trial, another very important trial that, uh, that you need to be familiar with, the five-year results of which were published in the Lancet in February of 2013, was a randomized control trial of drug-eluting stents versus cabbage, an earlier generation of drug-eluting stents than are currently used. Um, and uh, 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 was in 85 centers in Europe and the U.S., mostly in Europe. This is a, this is a terrific trial because it is the only trial still to this day uh, where, which was basically an all-commerce trial. And what this means is that, um, uh, is that 
out of uh, nearly 4,500 patients who were screened, uh, more than 3,000 were enrolled, 71%, which is an astonishingly high enrollment rate and really increases the power and the validity of the conclusions that this trial draws. Uh, 1,800 were randomized equally, and another 1,275 were enrolled in a registry. Most were deemed too complex for PCI. All of them were screened by a heart team. This was the first time that the heart team concept had been floated. It was floated in the context of coronary artery disease in the setting of a very well-performed trial. And the composite endpoint was one of uh, death, stroke, MI, and repeat vascularization. Uh, in my view, I think the major, the, the most major contribution that the syntax uh, trial, trial made was the development of the syntax score, which for the first time allowed us to quantify the severity of coronary artery disease. disease. It was no longer an eyeball test where you looked at it and said, that looks bad, that looks so-so, that doesn't look so bad. You could actually quantify it, and they came up with a way of doing it. There's a scoring diagram over here, and um, basically you can see on the left, a patient with a relatively low syntax score has got uh, a focal lesion here and a focal lesion here and a focal lesion in the right coronary artery. On the right, a syntax score of 52 is a patient with a tight left main, another lesion in the LAD over here, an occluded circumflex, and, and an occluded right coronary artery. So it's not just triple vessel disease. Both patients have triple vessel disease, but there's triple vessel disease and there's triple vessel disease, and we now know this to be very true. When you looked at all groups in the syntax trial at five years, uh, the, the, uh, 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 the outcomes were significantly better for patients uh, who had, um, uh, sorry, uh, cabbage versus PCI. Um, and uh, when you broke it down into syntax score, you saw that in patients with the low scores, less than 22, there was no difference. So this really confirmed the validity of doing PCI in patients with focal lesions and low syntax scores. Very important conclusion. And as you went to a higher score, a uh, higher degree of coronary complexity, uh, the differences begin, uh, begin to emerge. And when you looked at the high tercile score, there were dramatic differences between cabbage and PCI, uh, confirming that in patients with complex and very extensive coronary artery disease, coronary bypass surgery probably offers a better option. Now, the FREEDOM trial, which looked at this in diabetics that was published in the, uh, in the New England Journal in 2012, uh, was different from the syntax trial. Look at the enrollment ratio over here. Uh, almost 34,000 patients were screened, 3,300 were eligible, and 1,900 were enrolled, a total of 6% enrollment from, uh, for, for the total number of patients that were screened. And they showed basically that for all cause death, MI, or revascularization, the outcomes were better in cabbage versus PCI, and you see them listed over here. However, they did note that cabbage had a significantly higher stroke rate than PCI, which is an extremely important uh, conclusion and one that confirms what we see in daily life. Uh, there are registry data as well, which uh, uh, this is the New York State Registry from 2005. These data were updated in 2008, and I'm sorry I don't have that current slide over here, but they basically showed that these curves were diverging even further with a, um, um, uh, with a significant advantage for cabbage over, uh, over stenting uh, for patients uh, with triple vessel disease. Um, <clears throat> so why is cabbage better than PCI? Well, um, PCI treats an isolated lesion in the proximal vessel, uh, but, and the complexity of the lesion affects the outcome. Cabbage bypasses the proximal two-thirds of the vessel, so not just this portion where the, where the lesion is, but this segment over here where current and future threatening lesions can occur. So the complexity of the lesion here is irrelevant to the success or the outcome of cabbage. Other factors do impact it, but the lesion itself is irrelevant to the outcome of cabbage. And this advantage of cabbage will persist even if stent restenosis is zero. Um, the cover of The Lancet in January 2006, nine years ago, this is, I put this up because I enjoy putting it up, and I'm not sure it's so relevant today, but it says, in view of the survival benefits shown for coronary artery bypass grafting, the real controversy is why patients with symptoms and anatomy known to benefit from the procedure are still subjected to PCI. But is it cabbage or is it the lemur? It's impossible to fully dissect the independent benefits of the, of the IMA versus the SVG in the same patient. There is no head-to-head -head trial uh, of, of SVG-only bypass versus stents. 
it, it just wouldn't be ethical given what we know about uh, uh, about the Lima. I'll go back one. And, uh, and so any comparison of SVG to stents would be quasi-scientific at best. Now, nonetheless, most surgeons and cardiologists agree that the majority of cabbage benefits rests with the IMA. And this is the classic trial from uh, 1976 uh, by uh, 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 Fred Loop at the uh, Cleveland Clinic, which showed the distinct survival advantage that is conferred by the left internal mammary artery grafts. And, um, <clears throat> A follow-up study in 2009 uh, at the Cleveland Clinic, they looked at uh, 4,640 patients who had received coronary bypass surgery with a patent left internal mammary artery, and they came back with symptoms. And these patients were assigned randomly, uh, basically on the physician preference, to redo bypass surgery, PCI, or medical therapy. And they found that it didn't matter what you did, whether you operated on them, you did PCI on them, or, or you just treated them medically, there was no survival benefit as long as they had a patent left internal mammary artery. So why is it protected from atherosclerosis? We don't know, but it is the unquestioned standard for surgery in coronary artery disease, and it's a metric by which, in fact, the Society of Thoracic Surgeons rates institutions. We know that arterial grafts in general uh, have higher patency rates. Uh, this is uh, uh, patency of a lemma, uh, patency of radial artery grafts, and patency of vein grafts at five years. And we also know from the PREVENT study, which looked at angiographic patency at one year, that vein grafts have an astonishingly high failure rate of about 25 to 27%. They go down, but of course the patients don't necessarily come back with symptoms. They're just asymptomatic failures extremely high failure rate for vein grafts at one year. And so against that background, you have to note that stents are constantly uh, evolving, and the SPIRIT-4 trial uh, here showed excellent outcomes. There are others uh, more recent since then. And the FAME-2 trial, another very important trial, I think, that, uh, that came out in 2012, showed that a head-to-head -head comparison of, of uh, PCI versus medical therapy in patients uh, with, uh, with stable CAD and at least one uh, significant stenosis as determined by FFR, in those patients they found that, that the outcomes uh, were far superior uh, for, uh, for patients who underwent PCI. In fact, the study had to be stopped by the Data Safety Monitoring Board uh, after they had just uh, uh, enrolled uh, just over half their patients because the superiority was so marked. So back to the guidelines here. Um, I, uh, these are taken uh, directly from the ESC guidelines from the paper that was published last year, the, uh, the uh, 2014 guidelines. Uh, you can look them up online, very useful resource with all the references that you need going back to the very beginning um, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, late, uh, sorry, early 70s. And basically for prognosis, uh, the indication for revascularization for prognosis, uh, and, and this could be either PCI or cabbage, uh, is in patients with left main disease, any proximal LAD stenosis, uh, two vessel or three vessel disease uh, with impaired LV function, in patients in whom you've been able to demonstrate a large area of ischemia, and in patients who have a single remaining patent coronary artery with a stenosis greater than 50%. And for symptoms, of course, any coronary stenosis greater than 50% in the, in the presence of angina. And this is really a, a, a key slide, uh, basically shows that uh, uh, there is a uh, class one recommendation uh, for, for cabbage uh, in patients with uh, pro severe proximal LAD stenosis, uh, two vessel disease, et cetera, patients with syntax scores from low to high. But importantly, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, you should note that there is a class one recommendation for PCI in, in these groups over here, but also in patients with triple vessel disease uh, with a syntax score less than 22, a direct consequence of the uh, uh, conclusions from the syntax trial. So we don't know what future trends are. Perhaps the lima is all you need to stay alive, um, you know, and stents, stents will keep you going, uh, keep your symptoms at bay. Best medical therapy definitely has been shown with the COURAGE trial and other studies to be much more effective than was, than was, than was previously thought as long as, it's, as long as it's properly applied. 
The heart team is an important concept uh, where you have multiple people in the care of the patient involved in decision making. And it really was initially proposed in the context of the syntax trial. It's still more a concept than a reality in most centers. And almost two thirds of patients are not aware of the fact that there are alternative revascularization strategies that are available to them. And this is really very sad because um, you know, there are a variety of reasons for this and we can discuss this. The PCI to cabbage ratios in Europe vary wildly from two to 8.6. And we have a twice monthly uh, ischemic heart disease conference that Dr. Kleiman and I host at the Houston Methodist Hospital. And I can tell you, even the most seemingly straightforward cases will generate a great deal of debate. And it's really fascinating to see that that can happen. So if you have a single person making a decision, there is a possibility that that decision may not be the best one for that patient. The heart team works in TAVR. Why? Because it's been mandated by trials in the FDA. But in many parts of Europe now, it's a custom more, more honored in the breach than the observance. In Germany, for example, this heart team concept is a virtual thing. It's, it's really not even a real thing anymore. So I think uh, you know, the, the future for coronary artery disease is to take a multidisciplinary approach like cancer. It is unthinkable nowadays to make a decision in a, in a, in a center that is of, of any um, uh, uh, repute uh, to make a decision uh, in a patient who has cancer without the input of multiple specialists. Yet this is routinely done in the case of coronary artery disease today. I think there's going to be a convergence of, of a hybrid of best medical therapy, PCI, and cabbage. The syntax score has been a major contribution. The role of hybrid procedures is as yet undefined. And I believe that the heart team approach is essential for optimum care of patients with coronary artery disease. Thanks.